plants. They're green. They grow stuff. Boring, right? Wrong! Greetings, acolytes. Today we are going to be looking at 10 plants that are way more metal than you. Let's get into it. Warning, this video contains graphic language and imagery and mentions of drug abuse. Viewer discretion is advised. Number one, the Gimpy Gimpy. Our first plant is from my home continent, Australia. Ah yes, the land down under. The country so metal, some believe we aren't real. Australia does not exist. It isn't real. Of course we have hardcore plants. The Gimpy Gimpy, however, is a special type of psychopath. Get too close to this bad boy and you'll be wishing you were dead. Literally. Nicknamed the suicide plant, the toxic Gimpy Gimpy has driven many victims, including soldiers and horses, to take their own lives from the pain. The toxin contained within the plant is so strong that just breathing the vapours can cause a reaction. Oh! Ah! The real issue, however, is if you are unlucky enough to get too close. See, not only is the Gimpy Gimpy super toxic, it is covered in little spikes that are kind of like teeny tiny hypodermic needles. These get stuck into your skin and sting you until madness ensues. Warning signs are erected in the areas in which these plants grow, and people who work with the Gimpy Gimpy must wear full protective gear to avoid a reaction. Not the type of plant you want to bump into in the forest at night. <laughs> Number two, the Nepenthes Raja. This endangered flower is part of a large family of similar species known as pitcher plants. These flowering plants grow in marshy areas throughout Southeast Asia. But unlike your standard marsh plant, these clever little baddies have gained quite the evolutionary advantage. They have adapted to growing in nutrient-poor soil by becoming carnivorous. The rosettes of the flower form little pitchers that are full of digestive fluid. The lip of each pitcher is curved, slippery, and secretes a nectar that attracts prey such as insects. The prey, attracted by the nectar, slips on the lip of the pitcher and ends up in a bath of digestive juices where it is slowly consumed alive. That got dark quick. The Nepenthes Raja is a giant among these ravenous tricksters. The pitchers on these mega mounds can grow up to 41 centimetres high and 20 centimetres wide and can hold up to three and a half litres of fluid. Unlike most other pitcher plants that mainly snack on bugs, the Nepenthes Raja has been known to also consume reptiles, small rodents, frogs and even birds. Food chain reversed much? I like it when the victim becomes the victor. How about you? Number three, the Cordyceps fungus. Our next horror story takes us deep into the forests of Brazil. Here, the carpenter ants act very strangely. They climb 25 metres high into the canopy above their nest, bite into the bottom of a leaf and just hang there. But why? Zombie fungus is why. Yes, zombie fungus. That is the best way to describe the cordyceps. These mind control masters start as a single spore inside an ant. They hijack the ant's brain and steer its body up to the perfect height, right where the humidity is ideal for fungal Moist. growth. The fungus then compels the helpless ant to clamp its mandibles shut on a plant to hold it in place. Now with its victim in the perfect position, the cordyceps rips through the ant's exoskeleton, blooming in all its ghastly glory. As the mushroom heads, millions of spores are unleashed upon the carpenter ant colony below and the zombie ant apocalypse begins. Number four, Hura crepitans. The Hura crepitans is also known as the sandbox tree and is native to the tropical regions of North and South America. It has also made its way to Tanzania, where it is considered an invasive species. Now, you might think just by looking at this spike-covered monster of a tree that you can figure out why I considered it metal. 
the giant spikes, right? Well, yes and no. I mean, the spikes are pretty amazing and have earned the Hura Crepitans the nickname Monkey No Climb, but this tree is packing way more metal than that. Holy sh See, every single part of this plant contains a toxic latex. This substance is known to cause blindness and a range of other irritations. People who have found themselves below these trees in the rain have ended up having terrible and painful reactions. But wait, there's more. The spikes and the toxins are child's play. This plant drops bombs, literally. The fruit from the Hura crepitans are as spiky and toxic as mummy, but these little babies explode. Yes, explode. Knock one of these the wrong way and sharp shrapnel in the form of seeds will come flying out, reaching speeds of up to 240 kilometers an hour and traveling up to 18 meters. Oh, and you don't have to knock them either. Sometimes the dried fruit will simply explode for no reason. Definitely not one to plant in the garden, unless that's what you're going for. Number five, algae. Yes, even the smallest of all plants has some metal in it. Disclaimer, I know algae defined as a plant is a loose definition. We're having fun here, just, 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 just chill. Algae are so small that they only contain one cell, but get a bunch of them together and they can quickly unleash mayhem. Algae typically grow in aquatic environments such as oceans, lakes and rivers. When all is in balance, they are generally a valuable part of the ecosystem, providing food for many aquatic animals. Get algae in the wrong situation though, and it might go on a rampage. Certain conditions cause some types of algae to form toxic blooms. One of the most common types of these blooms is blue-green algae or cyanobacteria. This sometimes invisible villain can taint the water supplies of entire towns, rendering their drinking water poison. It can make creeks so toxic that all the fish die and animals that go there to drink never leave. When this algae builds up, it not only pollutes the water that it is in and sometimes creates poisonous green sludge, it also befouls the air. Large blooms emit enough toxic gas that people have become sick and even died after being overwhelmed by the fumes. Don't let this make you hate on algae though. We need it. It produces so much of our oxygen that we are kind of at its mercy. Not to mention, it's usually our fault when the algae turns evil. Number six, Datura stramonium. The next metalhead in our lineup is the Datura stramonium. This one is both beautiful and deadly my favourite combination. I'm sure that most of my witchy friends are more than familiar with the Datura. This widespread flowering weed, also known as moonflower, has been a staple in witchcraft and many other folk traditions across the world for centuries. We witches like to use it in flying ointments. It doesn't really make you fly, but its psychoactive properties can make you feel like you are. These properties are said to assist with astral travel and communing with the spirit world. Datura also has a range of medicinal qualities, but beware. In the wrong hands, Datura stramonium can be turned into scolopamine, one of the most dangerous drugs known to man. Native to Colombia, this variant of the Datura is a hardy plant that can grow almost anywhere. When processed with certain chemicals, the leaves and seeds of the plant can be turned into scolopamine, which is essentially a a mind control zombie drug. All it takes is a quick whiff of this substance and victims will do whatever they are told. Criminals absolutely love it. People who have reported being drugged with scolopamine have even robbed themselves. Yeah, this poor guy was seen helping assailants empty the contents of his apartment into their van. He woke up the next day with an empty home and no recollection of what had happened. That's scary stuff. Number seven, Rafflesia arnoldi. Another out there flower from Southeast Asia is the Rafflesia arnoldi. This giant of the plant world is the largest individual flower on the planet. Its immense size and the fact that it looks like an open mouthed portal to hell aren't the only things that have made this plant infamous. See, the Rafflesia arnoldi is a parasitic plant. It especially enjoys plaguing tree roots. 
When a seed from one of the plant's fruits finds itself dropped near a suitable victim, it begins to embed long tendrils of tissue into the host, sucking all of the nutrients that it needs directly from its host's body. Once the plant has sucked its fair share, it creates these giant blooms that smell like death, literally. The Rafflesia analdi produces stinky, volatile chemicals featuring notes of rotten fish and sulphur. Hmm. This attracts flies to pollinate the plant, which can then go to fruit. These fruits are eaten by small animals who then spread the seeds so they can go and snatch some more bodies. Number eight, Cascutta campestris, also known as golden dotter. The Cascutta campestris is yet another parasitic plant. Although it is not as exciting to look at as our last subject, this spindly yellow creeper is one that terrifies farmers. So much so that it is listed as a biosecurity threat in many countries. Individual plants are small, but they quickly spread, each one inserting tiny tendrils into its host. Once they have sunk their suckers into their prey, the little dotter plants lose their roots and instead draw all of their nourishment from their host. If left to spread, they end up smothering the host plant, completely sucking it dry until there is nothing left. Even if treated, they can still cause serious damage to crops because they are effective spreaders of disease. Farmers dread these plants so much because not only do they smother and sicken crops, the Cascada campestris can be deadly to livestock if ingested in large quantities. It is also a weed that can be really hard to get rid of. It's like that villain in the movie that everyone thinks is gone, but then it just randomly pops up out of nowhere. Here's Johnny. You see, the seeds from these plants don't say die. Why won't you die? They can germinate up to 10 years after being pooped out by an animal and five years years later under normal conditions. To eradicate this pest completely takes really intense pesticide or purification by fire. Number 9. Atricularia. This plant looks inviting enough from above the surface, but this is not a case of as above so below. Go underneath the water and you will see a tangled net of doom. Commonly known as bladderwort, this innocuous enough looking flower floats around bodies of fresh water catching any wrigglers that get too close. <coughs> An inspection of the net reveals that it is covered in little traps. It's a trap! These killer capsules lay ready and waiting. On the lip of each trap are small filaments. When bumped by an aquatic animal, these traps spring. The lid flies open and the negative water pressure inside sucks the prey in. When the trap is full, digestive enzymes assist in breaking down the meal, providing nutrients. This allows ultracalaria to thrive, even in environments where conditions are poor. Whilst ultracalaria is a terror for larvae, it is a marvel for gardeners. Keeping these ferocious floaters in with other aquatic plants helps to keep mosquitoes away. Ultracalaria will not only consume any mozzie larvae that it comes into contact with, it can prevent females from laying eggs in the first place. Female mosquitoes can smell a compound in the ultracalaria and will choose not to lay in bodies of water containing the plant. Probably a good call given the, you know, certain death. Number 10, Calamus australis. A final plant takes us back home to Australia and is one of my personal favourites. Calamus australis, or wait a while, as I called it growing up, is a peculiar type of palm. As competition for sunlight is fierce in Australia's dense tropical forests, these trees have taken to the air. The main plant looks like a regular palm, but closer inspection reveals long barbed vines. The vines serve to pull the palm tree closer to other taller trees so that it can support itself and grow tall, eventually reaching the sunlight of the canopy above. So right now you're probably thinking, okay, it climbs, so what? Well, the issue is that the wait a while throws out so many of these vines in so many directions that it can become an impassable thorny thicket. And the thorns aren't just any type of thorns. They are curved backwards, thick and super sharp. Perfect for climbing trees or catching flesh. These spiky hazards can stretch on through the rainforest, forming dense patches of pain more than 100 metres long. 
Unfortunate creatures that venture into these barbed wire landscapes often find themselves caught. The barbs get stuck into the skin and in cases where the vines are very thick, struggling generally results in more spikes in the skin and becoming very, very stuck. Don't know if it's true, but when I was growing up, I was told to watch out for these plants as they earned the nickname Wait A While because if you weren't careful in the bush and you got stuck in these killer vines, you would have to wait a while to get help. If help never came, you were a goner. Apparently, some unsuspecting explorers have met this exact fate. That's a nasty way to go. That's it. Ten plants that are way more metal than you. Unless you're this guy. If you made it this far, surely this video deserves a like. And if you want to see more like this, make it happen. Subscribe. Do it. Push the button. You can do it! See you next time we explore our magical and sometimes metal universe. Blessed be. Bye!